Hello world, how's it going? I hope you guys are all doing great. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So today, I wanted to share with you guys the top 10 unusual floating plants. This is actually gonna be a top 10 plus 11, so we're gonna have a total of 21 unusual floating plants for your aquarium that I've learned to use through my experience of keeping all sorts of plants within this aquarium hobby, hundreds. I know I did the top 10 thing, the uh, algorithms for YouTube, absolutely love that. That's why I did that. So we're gonna do the top 10 plus 11. So here we go. Might as well go ahead and get this one out of the way. Number one, Brazilian Pennywort. Makes an absolutely amazing floating plant. As you can see, it can do a lot of coverage. This is a lot of 10 gallon tanks. Floats right up on top there. And it can float up underneath, which usually when you get it, you'll grow it and put it within the tank and have it float down. It'll grow like that. Now you can grow it on the bottom, but it's not as easy to grow up on the bottom. And then eventually it will start trying to grow up and out. It takes it quite some time to do that though. A really neat floater. Lots of fine roots, stems for breeding, hiding for babies and whatnot. And as far as the care, very low maintenance. There's no airline in this tank, no CO2, no anything. Now I do like to feed my plants ferts. That is a very important part of keeping plant aquariums. Just like our fish, we need to feed our plants as well to keep them happy and healthy. That's with all plants in my opinion. But besides that, no special water requirements, hard water, soft water, doesn't need CO2. Um, low, medium light, doesn't really need a whole lot of light. It does like the light though. As far as most of my lighting on these tanks is a 6500K shop light. And now for number two, since we're going along the lines of Brazilian pennywort, another plant. But inside of this Brazilian pennywort, you can see there's another plant within there. And that is actually Rotalia rotundifolia. Really cool plant. It'll come out of the tank, marsh out like that. It'll float up on top. Likes to be fed ferts. Doesn't require any like special water, any CO2, any airlines. All these plants are pretty much low tech plants. Every one of them besides like maybe one of them that does really require CO2. So we'll have the same care with all of them. And I really like the Rotalia rotundifolia with the waxy leaves. And you can do this with other Rotalias as well, for instance. And here floating on top is some Rotalia Colorado. You can see how it's all bunched up there. It just floats right on top. Really colorful, really pretty. Yellow shrimp love to get up in it. bushy super bushy this has been growing like this for quite some time you can see where the leaves are running off all new growth just been floating what it looks like from below so let's bundle it up with rotalias also rotalia rotundifolia trying out a little bit here you can see the stems of the rotalia and the roots and there's some algae. I got hundreds of tanks to maintain. Be gentle. Which Rotalia now brings me to the next with Lymphnophilia. This is Lymphnophilia aromatica. Now I know it is being supported by this other plant, which we'll talk about that here next, but you can actually grow this floating without this. Which in here, I've got another type of Lymphnophilia. Here we have Lymphnophilia sessiflora, so another type of Lymphnophilia. Grows on top, great for breeding, especially with the leaves like that. And now on the hygrophilias, here's a hygrophilia angustifolia. Some of you guys may remember this tank was absolutely full of this plant. And uh, just growing up and out everywhere on both of these tanks. I did a video of trimming it all, but it's absolutely crazy how big that plant can get. And it can just sit there and float around and it grow. And another good floating stem plant would be the Poco Stem and Stellata Octopus. Another great floating plant. So you can see here, here's a start just by itself. It was just a little tiny shoot. And eventually it will just start floating and cover at the top. Once again, easy to keep plant, unusual floater.
And next here we've got willow moss. Willow moss is a really neat moss here in Wesley's tank. This is willow moss, a little kind of different fronds, but you can grow this as a floater as well during water changes. It loves to float. Actually, all this is floating up above there, it stays on top of the plants. Plants grow up underneath it really well too. I like your nubiuses. So you can keep that as a top layer and uh, many plants will grow right up underneath it. So willow moss, once again, super easy to take care of. Oh, and I just got to show that Brazilian penny wart back there. Look how that stuff is just coming down and hanging. It's crazy. Now you can float dwarf sag, but it's a little trickier. So I don't recommend that as much. Just showing that to you guys while we're up here. It's kind of growing in like some moss. I don't know if that's visiting or what kind of moss that is. It may be pilo. I think it's pilo. Which brings me to pilo moss. Makes really great floater as well, just like willow moss. And it will float. See how it's growing up above the surface of the water here? Super low light tank. Loves to attach to the sides of things as well. Absolutely love pilo moss. One of my favorite all time mosses. A little more of what pilo moss looks like floating. It's kind of getting dried up here. I'm not really sure what causes that. Maybe a type of fungus or just the bio load, rotten food getting to it. But it does die off once in a while. And this is a really cool feature of the pile moss. It'll grow like these Christmas tree like cones up above it. If it gets real mature this way, you can see where it's still got a lot of browning around it from probably lack of feeding the plants. But that's another one. Really neat. Shot. Now back to this plant as I was showing earlier. This is Rishia. This is crystal wart. Really cool. You can make marshes out of it. You can plant plants in it. So we love this plant. No CO2. Once again, no airlines, none of that. Really easy to grow plant. You can see it doesn't get real thick, but if you were to put CO2 in this, it will bulk up. Really cool. It'll get bubbles all over it. That's why they call it crystal wart because when it pearls with CO2, it's really, really neat looking and just looks like there's tons and tons of crystals everywhere. And yeah, really cool plant. Rishia flucians or flushanes or however you pronounce that. And this is a really great floating plant as well, Bacopa. Whether it be the Bacopa Carolina or the Monterey, it has been a great floating plant for me. As you can see here, it can get a little crazy if you let it go. Had to jump between these two 10 gallon tanks and it creates a nice system, real nice system for egg scatterers, breeders to swim up in between there. You can see where the leaves have been dying right here just cause of drier air. Danios love it. Really cool breeding ground. And for the next, may not be as unusual, but I know many will plant this. It is hornwort. Also seen within this bacopa. Really, really easy plant to grow. Matter of fact, it grows really well with like next to no lights. I've been growing this stuff really thick. For some reason, it grows super thick with hardly any lights. The ambient light is almost best for it. And those guys are hungry. You guys hungry? And since we're at this rack and talking about hornworts, borderline floating plants, guppy grass, some of you guys may think you have to plant it, but it's definitely a floater. You just let that stuff float and go. Many of you guys may have already known that, but it's not like your usual floater, like your red roots, your duckweed, your frog bits, all that stuff. And once you again, you can see it covers like crazy. That's why I sell it three dollars a bag. I got a bit. And another next is the Taiwan lily. Here I've got a bunch of Taiwan lily just floating up top here. I actually prefer to grow it this way. The Taiwan lily just grow right up on top. Because whenever you plant it, it'll plant. And it'll grow the long shoots, and then it'll get up here, and then it'll start propagating. So Taiwan Lily, another great floater, is often overlooked. If you guys ever wondered or needed something to do with your Taiwan Lily that you've gotten from me, 
This is probably the best way I would grow it. And now on to Italian Val or either corkscrew Val, Tiger Val, pretty much any Val scenario. You can grow as a floater as well. There you can see it's just floating, running the stems, boom, 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 growing like crazy. It actually grows and propagates really well like this. It's kind of crazy. It makes great roots for the inlers, albinos. And I know I don't have a picture of these guys on the website, but look at these guys. I've got a ton of them. People don't really know what they are, but these are the actual albino split tails. So if you get on the website and see the albino split tails, these are what these are. And for one of my all time favorite floating plants is pearlweed. I absolutely love this stuff as a floating plant. Covers pretty much everything, pearlweed. Here's a better tank and view of it. It's big and bushy. Top overgrowth. And you can treat this like ratio where you can grow plants in it, you can put stems in it, grow other things with inside of it. But you gotta be careful on some of them because they can cause algae to get in, but most stem plants you can pluck in there and float in there as well if you wanna kinda of create a marsh type system. Then along the lines of pearlweed, we've also got HC. I don't have much of it left. Or there's a tiny bit sitting in that pilo moss but you can float that. Now that plant does prefer softer water and CO2 if you are trying to float and grow HC, Hemanthius calotroides, which is actually grown up and onto the log up here. And here's another floating plant I've come to love. This is Pontemagetan gayi. Really neat kind of different plant. See the root systems and the leaves everywhere. Another bit of it growing down here, mixed in with the pearl weed. Look at all that coverage. Talk about a metropolis. And for the next one, excuse all the algae, because I have not been able to keep up with my water changes in here. Hair algae has got into it and I wasn't feeding it like I should, but this is hydrocotyl tripartite. You don't have to plant it. You can actually float and grow it pretty easily. Really cool floater as well. It is take a little, while to grow it's not the fastest growing plant and it is a little more stringy in the coverage up top well actually there in the back you can see it's floating more actually there you go there's a good floating shot loves its first though i would not try keeping this without fertilization and another unusual one not that floating algae over there which is unusual you can do hair algae which can look really cool i've got another one floating here it could get that alien kind of look going for your ecosystem. But what I am talking about is the red tiger lotus over here next to it. Which this stuff can just grow floating with the stems. It grows everywhere, a lot of coverage. If you want to use that as a floater though, you're going to need a big tank because that is a tank buster type of plant. That's the only issue with the red tiger lotus. See the corkscrew though is floating around in there too. Pretty nice. Now, there's a few honorable mentions I would like to talk about. Buccia phalandris, uh, cryptocorns, Anubius. They can all be floated as well, but they get a little trickier. The bioload sometimes, and then the buoyancy. All kind of depends. I don't know if it's something with the water or the hardness or the softness on whether it'll float or not, but you can float those as well as ferns sometimes. Maybe not the most practical, but I'll still mention it. Oh, and here's some Vesuvius, which is actually a pretty good floating plane too. I think it's kind of messy. Like it's barely still hanging on here. I've always had troubles with the ground because it always wants to propagate up like that. And then if you let it propagate and sit, it will grow like crazy up on the top of the water. Oh, and another one I didn't mention earlier, Rotalia any fine leaf plant. Any of those fine leaf Rotalias work really great. But lots of stem plants. You'd be surprised how many stem plants you can actually get to grow floating. Sorry, these volcano guppies really catching my eyes. Ah, found a floating Anubius for you. So... Here's a floating Anubius with all the roots, how it grows out. It's a pretty big one. That's a Coffifolia, I believe. Well, there's a bunch of types of floating plants that you may not have thought about or may not have seen. I hope you guys have learned something 
or may take something from this, please share it with your friends, families, any fish heads you know. And yeah, like, subscribe if you haven't. That'd be awesome. And show the algorithm some love. And I appreciate you all. Till next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one.